Thanks for allowing us to share our work today on behalf of the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia and Penn Center for Machine Learning and Neurology. Uh, my name is Katie Fisher and I am a pediatric urology fellow and my colleague Yu Ming Lee is a PhD student. And today we're gonna prevent, present our uh, experience with a collaborative approach to building a machine learning model for clinical urology. Oh, sorry. Uh, so here's just an overview of our team's goals. Uh, so aim one of our team was to create an automated model to accurately identify and measure kidney stones on CT scans. This aim has actually already been completed um, and published by other members of our team. So today we're going to focus more on aim two, which is what the two of us have been involved in and what we're currently working on. Uh, so aim two is to create a machine learning model using deep learning of CT images to aid in the prediction of the likelihood of patients with ureteral stones spontaneously passing these. And our ultimate goal, uh, like our colleague Justin Ziemba talked about yesterday, is to deliver better individualized patient care so that we can predict those patients who are most likely to need surgery and get this for them earlier, and then predict those patients who are likely to spontaneously pass their stones and avoid surgery in these patients. Um, a sub-aim of our aim two is to create a urinary tract atlas, and we'll show you in our next slide sort of why this is necessary, but the aim of the atlas is to allow automated segmentation of the kidneys, ureters, and bladder. Uh, so we're going to talk mostly about the creation of this atlas because that's sort of where our work is at right now today. So I think these CT scans nicely illustrate the role of the urinary tract atlas. So here you can see a mid ureteral stone uh, on the left side on both the axial and coronal cuts. Um, and you can see that the stone is readily apparent, but the ureter itself is very hard to trace. You can't really see the course of the ureter. And if we can't see it, neither can the computer. Um, and so since non-contrast CTs are the most utilized type of imaging for diagnosing kidney stones, we need to overcome sort of this difficulty in visualizing and recognizing the ureters in order to create a uh, model that's able to predict ureteral stone passage. So collaboration between neurologists and machine learning scientists is critical to our work. Um, so I think this schematic illustrates what many people, including myself, think of when they first hear about sort of collaboration in neurologic research, especially if you're working with people who are more science heavy and people who are more clinical heavy. And that's the urologists and the machine learning experts sort of each working on their own portions in parallel of the project to create a model. But I think this schematic actually better illustrates how collaboration should work and how it works on our team uh, with constant communication and discussion back and forth between the urologists and the machine learning experts throughout the project from its conception all the way throughout. Um, this type of urologic research is not really possible without this constant back and forth collaboration. And so we hope that we can give you some examples of this from our own experience in our project today to better illustrate this. So our team includes lots of members, uh, medical students, urology residents, fellows and attendings, bioengineering and machine learning faculty and students, data scientists and research assistants. And each of us bring our own knowledge base and skill sets to the project. And so I think it's again, really important just that we're sort of in constant communication with each other and bouncing ideas off one another to really be able to accomplish our aims. So starting with study design, um, Ewing and I are just gonna give some examples sort of about the different approach that we have and the different things that we're thinking about uh, in this research. So as a urologist, I'm thinking about the imaging that's most, most often used clinically to diagnose kidney stones, which again is non-contrast CT scans. And then also about what data and imaging we should include in a model in order to make it clinically relevant. Things like the size of our patient, their history of kidney stones, maybe what medications they're on. And then also about how we define stone passage. Is that defined by an imaging outcome? Is it defined by the patient presenting to your clinic with a stone in their hand? Um, as a machine learning scientist, we concentrate more on the, the type of data we use to create a model, whether the data is non-contrast CT uh, or in contrast enhanced CT, and how we get around the limitation of the non-contrast CT to visualize the organs such as ureters. We will also need to consider how many data we needed to create the model, whether the data below 50 is sufficient or we need more than 100 scans. And we will also consider whether we will need uh, manual segmentation to assist the training the model. Lastly, we will we also consider whether the public available data set could be used as an external data set to assist the training the model. So in terms of data collection, um, as a urologist, I'm helping to identify patients who have ureteral stones, 
from our databases and from our clinics, looking at their medical records, and then gathering relevant clinical information from the electronic clinical medical record and figuring out, you know, which patients actually had our outcome of interest, which is, is stone passage. Um, and then another role, particularly in the urinary tract atlas, is segmenting the CT urograms, which involves just manually outlining the kidneys, ureters, and bladder separately, you know, since as a urologist, I'm more familiar with the anatomic detail and reading images. As a machine learning scientist, we will collaborate with urologists to, to work with the image segmentation to create manual uh, labels for network training. Um, in this step, we will create a semi-automated uh, models to improve the manual pro uh, process in patient identification and model segmentation. And uh, after we finish uh, generating the models, we will also need to consider what kind of data preprocessing steps, steps we needed to uh, fit the data into the model. So in terms of actual model creation, the things that I'm interested in and thinking about are how the model can be used in clinical practice and is the model going to ultimately accomplish what we wanted to, which is to allow us to deliver better individualized patient care. Uh, as a machine learning scientist, we, uh, we consider more about what kind of model is the best suited to uh, our tasks, whether the model is a classification model, a, a detection model, or a segmentation model. And in our uh, project, we work on the segmentation model. Uh, after uh, create the model, we will um, split the data into the training and testing data set. Um, we will also consider what kind of hyperparameters we need to tune to make sure the model achieve the best results. Um, after the model are created and the trained, we will use a testing set to to um, run, uh, run the data through the model and to evaluate the model performance based on the testing set. Uh, so I will talk about the Atlas creation. Uh, the Atlas creation is still the data uh, creation step. Uh, in this step, we um, aim to develop an efficient, accurate model to uh, predict the urinary tract and the ureteral stone passages. Uh, so for data creation, uh, generating the accurate uh, kidney, ureter, and bladder segmentations are essential. Uh, however, this uh, manual labeling process are laborious. So we come up with a deep learning model to speed up the label generating process. The model can be trained on a small data set and inferenced on a larger data set to generate uh, rough uh, segmentations. And those rough set segmentations will send to to the radio urologist uh, to manually uh, uh, correct those labels. And those correct labels will be added to the atlas. Uh, in this model, we use the 25, <clears throat> 25 scans for training and four scans for testing. Uh, we have additional 100 urograms um, um, will pass to the model to generate the atlas. And here I will show some results. Um, first, I will talk about the model workflow. We have a CNN model. Uh, the model will take the input of the 3D CT urograms, and the model will output the segmentations for kidney, ureter, and bladders. Uh, I also show the evaluation of the model uh, on the table in the right. Uh, you can see uh, the model performed better for the kidney and bladder uh, for achieving, achieving a higher uh, dice score. Uh, but for ureter, uh, ureter is uh, much smaller, and it's hard to uh, identify, so it's much challenging for uh, challenging for the model to uh, segment the accurate ureters, and we are working on improving the model to generate the better results. Um, I also show some segmentation results in the in the slides below. Uh, as you can see, the model can actually uh, generate the accurate uh, kidney, ureter, and bladder segmentations uh, to facilitate the uh, stone passage research. Um, just as you know, this this atlas is still uh, in the data creation step, and we are still working on a model creation. Uh, we aim to create a more complex model to generate a um, much accurate and a faster kidney, ureter, bladder segmentation. Um, to help the stone diagnosis. So even though our project is still in process at this point, the necessity and the benefits of, a, of collaboration between the members of our team to accomplish our research goals has already been readily apparent. Our progress up to this point would not have been possible without this collaborative approach. Deep learning models can be used to help to answer difficult clinical questions and improve patient care. But the complexity of this type of work necessitates a collaborative approach between urologists and experts in machine learning and imaging analysis. Involvement of all of the team members from the outset of the project in constant communication and collaboration with one another is crucial to the success of this type of project. Thank you. And thank you to all of our additional team members.